I remember uh, the first piece of artwork that I ever got from my aunt was my uh, five-speed Schwinn bicycle and magic marker, and she made little racing stripes and flames on my bicycle. <laughs> um, the next two wonderful pieces, we're, we're over here and over there now, and I apologize to the woman who's going to take them. But I, I've, had them, I've had them on my basement wall, you know, finished, finished, nice finished wall for years, and if it wasn't there, then I'd have to paint the wall because it'd be a black <laughs> And then my uncle, the things I always remember, being very young, waking up Christmas morning and waiting for him to finish breakfast so I could open my presents. And, you know, I, now I realize, you know, now I appreciate the family. I appreciate when people come over. I appreciate the holidays. But as a child, I was, finish your breakfast. <laughs> um, I, my brother Bill um, in, in Twin Falls, Idaho, uh, emailed it to us, and we all, uh, we all drew straws. And, I have to, and I'm going to read. Uh, uh, Angela and Irv, I'm glad that folks have gathered to spend time together in tribute and memory of my late aunt and uncle. Unable to join everyone in New York, I've written a few of the memories and thoughts I hold close. There are many memories, of the, and the following are a few that come to mind. Angela and Irv were wonderful, and they helped me grow up as a kid, and their lives inspired me today. Uh, my Aunt Angela had terrific energy. I remember as a small child, I remember as a small lad, uh, she, she bought all of us kids tuna fish sandwiches at the luncheonette in Coney Island, top of my ice cream cone, as we went out the door onto the boardwalk. Well, as we walked, the scoop on my cone fell off and landed on the boardwalk. I was embarrassed and sad that the ice cream was lost. And Angie took uh, one look at me, raising my empty cone without hesitation, and marched me back in, down the boardwalk to buy me another one. The ice cream man winked at her and handed me my free cone. Um, and my Aunt Angela was a trooper. Memory recalls the subway ride from Queens to Yankee Stadium was well over an hour. Uh, there were baskets of fried chicken and all the fixings, tuck, fixings tucked under her arm. Phil, Jerry, and my brother Tim and me all by her side. My aunt taught me the courtesy to give up my seat on a subway for a lady. We had the best time at those afternoon doubleheaders at the old stadium. Um, and my Aunt Angela always made a fuss. My aunt's holiday cooking was unparalleled in the universe. The table settings, the soup, the appetizers, entrees, desserts were delicious and special. And my uncle poured the wine. Uh, my uncle Irving was kind to little kids and animals. Uh, my cousin Jerry and I came across a few big kids at the baseball field near my house. They were being cruel to the little frogs that hung out near train tracks. It wasn't long before we returned with my uncle Irv. He slowly spoke to those kids about the greatness of the frogs and the relationship we have with them. And we all left feeling good. Uh, my uncle Irv and I talked about genius. Uh, my uncle loved baseball. I had the pleasure of attending a few baseball games with my uncle during my 20s. During one such game, we spoke about the many forms in which genius displays itself. The supreme athletic ability of our favorite baseball players was a type of genius that we all appreciated. Um, I still chuckle with the memory of my aunt and uncle trying to convince. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I still chuckle with the memory of my aunt Angela trying to convince her husband that it might be a good idea to leave Chase Stadium a little early. It was the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Mets were up by six runs on this beloved rain-soaked Dodgers. During these times, we're two peas in a pod. We love the beauty of the game. I wish Charlotte, Michael, Ben, and I could be at the memorial dinner with everyone today. Love Bill Carberry, Twin Falls, Idaho. Thank you. Hi, I'm Gracie's daughter, Joanne, the not in the family. Um, uncle Irving was my dear uncle, and I have fond memories of him. Every time he saw me, he would say, "So when are you going to college? When are you going to college?" I'd say, "Leave me alone. I'm a single mom raising two babies." So when are you going to college? <laughs> so I went to college and I graduated on honor roll. He was every semester. And I always thank him because I don't know if I ever really would have went if I didn't have somebody constantly <laughs> after me when you going to college. But it was the most a wonderful experience to be learning as an adult. And I was so proud of myself I had that paper on the teacher's desk. The first one I had everybody in the class. I was so into learning as an adult. And to him, I thank him always for helping me to do that. And today, I'm a school teacher because he helped me to go to college. Um, 
he's a wonderful man. And, and my Aunt Angie was a beautiful lady. She, I remember she invited my children over and Aunt Roz for a Sunday afternoon lunch. And she fed us like we were kings and queens. I mean, from soups to nuts and just sit and don't do a thing and just sit and feed us and feed us. And just a beautiful, beautiful heart and soul. They were beautiful people and they will be so missed. And I'm so grateful that they were a part of my life. About a month or so ago, and I was telling him um, uh, some fond memories I have of Aunt Angie when we were younger. She used to come to the house with Uncle Irving, and I would sit with her in the kitchen and watch her make these amazing salads because it didn't just have to taste good, it had to look phenomenal. And I would stand there and just totally freak out watching her turn a radish into a rose or a carrot into a butterfly. And when I was explaining this to, to Jerry, he was saying to me, you know, everybody's always about food with my mom. And I was like, no, it has nothing to do with the food. I was a little kid and I was amazed at her patience. You know, so I mean, Aunt Angie, she was just an incredibly beautiful person inside and out. She had a heart that was infamous. It, it just it just never stopped. She was always giving and kind and, and everything was attention to detail. And I remember thinking, what an intelligent my man, my, my uncle Irving was, and what an intelligent person he was for picking somebody like like Aunt Angie as a wife, you know. And, and, and I also remember thinking the same thing of my uncle Boris for picking Aunt Marcia. <laughs> so, so they're intelligent men on my side of the family. And I feel very blessed to be a part of their life. Thank <laughs> you. 